Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up a basic attack animation for our Mech Combat character. In addition to that we're also going to be fixing up the camera view as at the moment you are very very zoomed in and you can't really see what's in front of you as you have this gigantic mech in the way. So without further ado let's go ahead and dive straight in. So the first thing that we're gonna do is open up our third person character blueprint as in there we're gonna be able to fix up our camera. What we also need to do within that blueprint is create a variable of the type boolean which is simply going to tell the engine whether or not they should be swinging their arm to hit an enemy with a hammer. You'll see exactly what I mean by that later on in the video. So first things first, open up that third person character underneath third person BP and then your blueprints folder. Within here, go into your viewport and all we're going to do with this is select our camera actor, the follow camera, and then just move it back and then up a little bit so you can see over the shoulders. Go ahead and hit compile, move that window out of the way and then press play. And what you'll notice now is you have a much better camera position and you can see everything that is in front of you. So with that being done, we can move on to actually getting the character to swing its arms. So if you go back into your third person character, what I want you to do is add a new variable. So press add variable in the bottom left here, and we are going to give this the name is attacking. And then with this, make sure your variable type is set to boolean. And then if you hit compile, make sure the default value is untrue. So make sure it's unticked. And the reason for this being is when they first load up the game, we don't want them to be swinging their sword. We want to be turning this on with code when we set up our inputs for that. So moving on from there, we can start moving on to the animation side of things. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we need to do is go back into our mech combat folder, go to our meshes and into our main character folder. Within here, we need to open up our robo underscore character underscore mesh. Actually, scrap that, we need to open up the animation blueprint. So open up mech underscore animbp, open it up, and then what we need to do is add a state for attacking. So from our idle, we are going to drag out and create a new state. And then we are going to give this the name attacking. And then what we're going to do is just move it up over here and then also drag back to idle as we want to go from idle to attacking and back again once they finish playing the animation. We also want them to be able to do this while they're running as well. So drag out from walk and run to attacking and then drag back as well. So once we've done this, what we now need to do is move on to actually feeding in some animations for this. Double click on attacking and then what we're going to be doing is merging the bottom half of the character with the attacking animation. So we can attack regardless of they're moving, walking or running. The way we're going to do this is using the layered blend per bone node. And this is where we're going to be getting to some more of the complex animation blueprint stuff. Um, but go ahead and create this. Your base pose is going to be your starting point. And in this case, it's going to be where we're telling the engine if we're walking or running. So what we need to do is hook this up and we're going to be feeding in our walk run blend space. So the way we're going to get this is to go to our asset browser in the bottom right, grab run underscore BS, and then hook this up into your base pose. For our direction and speed, we're using the variables we've already got access to. So get them from the bottom left hand corner, just drag, drop, get a reference to those and hook them up. Then what we're going to do from here, our blend pose zero, we need to feed in the attacking animations. Now we've not just got one animation for attacking, we've got two. So the way we're going to play these is dragging out and using the random sequence player. 
this is just going to choose an animation on random. So with this selected, in the top right hand corner in the details panel, what I want to do is turn on shuffle mode, so it's just going to play this on random, meaning there is no repeats, and then I'm going to create two entries. And then if we open this up, each one of these, I can then start feeding in the animation. So the first one, hammer mech underscore anim underscore default underscore attacking one, put this in here. So select it and then use it. If not, you're just going to have to select it from the drop down that way. You've got chance to play over here, so you can make it a little bit less random if you want to. It's entirely up to you, but you can play around with those settings if you want to. But for now, I'm going to leave it just there. For the second one, we are going to be hooking up the default underscore attacking free, and then we are going to be leaving it just there. So now what we need to do is set up the layer blending. And the point at which we are going to be blending these is the torso. So we want the legs and the lower half of the body to be blended one way, and then the top half, so swinging the arms, to be blended another way. The way we're going to do this is to go and select our layer blend per bone, break this down, add a branch filter, and then within this, the bone name we are going to be using is going to be set to torso. And then what we're going to be doing is just leaving it there for now. Once we've done this, we are going to go back to our state machine and start setting up our transitional rules. Once our transitional rules are set up, we can start testing this, making sure it can attack and it can also run at the same time. So from idle to attacking, what we're going to do is simply check to see if is swinging sword is true, or is, swing, is attacking is true. Now, we don't have access to that variable at the moment, so what we've got to do is to go to our event graph, and then where we cast to our third person character before, all we're going to be doing is get is attacking. And then with this, we are going to promote this to a variable, and we're just going to give us the same name, is attacking. And then if we just move this over here, we now have access to that variable. So we can tell when they should be attacking. So going back to our idle to attacking, in here, if it is true, simply hook it up. And it's going to start playing the animation. Same goes over here from walk and run to attacking. Check to see if it is attacking. And then it will play. And then for the way back, from attacking to either idle and walk run, all we're going to be doing is checking to see whether or not it is not true. So from attacking to idle, you want to get is attacking. And then we are going to be looking for not boolean. So what this is going to do is return true if is attacking is not true. So if we go back, do the same thing over here, get is attacking, and then get your not. And then what you're going to be doing is hitting compile. So if we go back into our main state machine, go to our anim preview tab, what we can do is we can toggle is attacking. And you can see with that, it's going to start swinging the arm and it's going to start playing random animations. So that is all good, that bit is working. If I turn up my speed, what you should also have is your character running at the same time as they are attacking. So it should be all really seamless and it should all be blended together. As soon as you stop attacking, it's just going to continue on with the run. And you can see it's just blending and switching between the states as it needs to. So that bit is all set up, that is all perfect. We don't currently have a hammer in the hand or a way to actually activate this attack and that's what I'm going to do now. So having said that, I'm going to set up an input for attacking. So go into edit, project settings, give it a couple of seconds to load up 
and all we're going to be doing is setting up an input action for our attack. So with the project settings open, go to input on the left hand side here, go to action mappings and then create a new one. We're just going to give this the name default attack. And then with this for the key binding, we are going to set this to left click on our mouse. So find your mouse at your mouse section and then we are going to do left mouse button. Close this up and then if we go into our character blueprint underneath third person BP and third person character, we can then set this up and use it. So right click, type in default attack. Once this is active, all we're going to be doing is telling it to set is attacking to true. And the way I did that is just drag out and then set is attacking. We're going to set it to true and then we're going to have a delay. This delay is going to be equal to the length of the animation. And then after that, all we're going to be doing is setting is attacking to untrue. I don't know the duration of the animation off the top of my head and neither will you guys. So what we're going to do is go into our folder for our main character and just find out the animation length. So open up your default attack one and within the anim editor you can see here the animation is 0.56. We've also got another one to check as well and what you should have is both of them at the same time. They both end at 0.56. So if we go into our third person character again, we can set this duration to 0.56, hit compile, and if we go into the game, when we left click, you can see it is trying to attack with its arm, so it's doing its bit. So that is pretty much everything for our attack animation for now. We still need to add the hammer in there and it's going to look a little bit better, but that is for the next video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.